Central vision is the perception of objects directly in the line of sight. This vision is important for daily tasks like driving, reading, playing sports, and even recognizing faces. The area of the retina responsible for central vision is the macula and fovea. Let's take a minute to look at this important central area of the retina. This is a photograph of a small portion of the back wall of the eye. To the left is the optic disc, the area where the optic nerve enters the back wall of the eye. The terminology used to describe the central retina is confusing. The terms macula and fovea seem to mean different things to different people. These discrepancies will be noted in the following discussion. An area centered about 4 millimeters over and a little less than a millimeter down from the middle of the optic disc, having a diameter of 5 to 6 millimeters, that's about a quarter of an inch, is an area anatomically known as the macula or macula lutea. Near the center of the macula is a small indentation or pit called the fovea or fovea centralis. This region has a diameter of about a millimeter and a half, about the size of the head of a pen. At the bottom of this pit is an even smaller area, about 0.35 millimeters in diameter, called the foveola. The fovea, and especially the foveola, pick up the finest details of central vision. The outer region around the fovea centralis can be split into two regions. The parafovea, which has a width of about a half of a millimeter, and the parafovea, which has a width of about a millimeter and a half. Everything outside of this central area is said to be the peripheral retina. This is part of an image from a diagnostic test called Optical Coherence Tomography, or OCT for short. The image is a cross-section of the retina, showing the retinal thickness at different locations. In the center is the pit-like shape of the fovea. To help visualize the contours of the different regions of the retina, this image is superimposed on the photo of the retina with roughly corresponding lateral scale. So again, the floor of the pit is the foveola, and the pit itself is called the fovea. The area encompassed by the yellow lines here is the parafoveal area and then the parafoveal area. Finally, there is the area of the macula, which is only about a quarter of an inch across. So far in this video, the features of the central retina have been labeled as an anatomist might describe them. Among medical professionals, however, the term macula is often used to indicate the immediate vicinity of the foveal pit, and the term fovea is used to indicate the floor of the foveal pit. In this view into the bottom half of the eye, you can see a close-up of the fovea with the white wall of the eye, called the sclera, the choroid in pink, Brooks membrane, and the brown retinal pigment epithelium, all underneath the sensory retina. The cone cells are shown in green, and the rod cells are gray. The nuclei of the bipolar cells are shown in purple, and the ganglion nuclei are shown in blue. The flatter central portion of the foveal pit is the foveola. The fovea is arranged for optimal central vision. Several features of the fovea make this optimal perception possible. To begin with, the photoreceptor layer of the retina in the foveal region contains an area of more densely packed and longer than usual cone cells. This longer length gives light an even greater chance of hitting the light-sensitive portion of the photoreceptors. And the more densely packed arrangement of cones means that the light coming from the particular object being viewed will fall on more of these photoreceptors, generating more information, greater detail for sharper perception of the object. In addition, the upper layers of the retina have a swept-aside appearance, so the incoming light doesn't have to travel through these layers. The connections of a sample of the cells on the left, highlighted in blue, give a better feel for this swept-aside appearance. In this area, the upper portion of the cone cells are unusually long. This length is necessary to be able to connect with the swept-aside upper layers of the retina. These elongated connecting appendages are called Henle fibers. If you look straight down at the bottom of the foveal pit, 
the fibers would be arranged radially like the spokes of a wheel spreading out in all directions towards the slope of the pit. Also enhancing central vision is the fact that there are no retinal vessels in the lower portion of the pit to get in the way of incoming light. The innermost half millimeter diameter of the fovea is completely free of any retinal capillaries and is called the avascular zone or the capillary free zone. The choroid nourishes the full thickness of the retina in this area. Another vision enhancing feature of this area has to do with the transmission of information. In the human eye there are well over a hundred million rod cells and about six or seven million cone cells, but there are only about one million nerve fibers available to carry signals to the brain. In the peripheral areas of the retina, each nerve fiber carries information generated by at least dozens of photoreceptors. In these peripheral areas, the middle layer of the nerve cells, with the bipolar, amacrine, and horizontal cells, pre-processes this information, mixing and condensing the information before its transmission to the brain. But in the fovea, each nerve fiber carries the information from just one cone cell, and hence top priority is given to the integrity of signals from this very small but important region of the retina.